Welcome to the Cross Border Interview Podcast, a podcast about getting out from behind the keyboard and just talking. Each week, we invite a guest or two to sit down and talk about their life and their work. I'm Christopher Brown, your host, and this is the Cross Border Interview Podcast featuring Demi Michelle. Okay, so we won't keep me along, but we'll get into this. Uh, Demi, <laughs> thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Our guest today is a, a self-described country pop singer uh, from America. Uh, we're going to be talking about her career and her uh, music. Uh, but first off, I want to thank you, Demi, for coming and being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. Awesome. Demi, uh, my first question to all musicians that I have on the show is this. What does music mean to you? Everything. It's truly what I turn to during difficult times. I turn to it when I want to smile and dance and have fun. It means everything to me. And ever since I got into song, and it's become even more special to me because I'm always able to communicate my life and my story through music. So music is literally my whole world. So let's talk about that. Where does your itch for music come from? When did you first pick up the the music bugged and start running with it? Do you remember that day? It was actually when I was really little. I was over at my cousin's house for my cousin's birthday and she sat down at the piano and started to play happy birthday and I at the time had no musical training at all and then I sat down right after her and played it back by ear and then my family was like oh she should start taking piano lessons so that's kind of what it started it for me and then it kind of snowballed from there because I joined choir and then in college I learned guitar and then started songwriting so from a young age I've always loved the music and did your mother and father foster that musical uh, uh, talent in you? Because I know you said that you uh, took piano lessons and then you did guitar, but were they supportive of you going into the music industry? Definitely. Yeah, they were the ones who encouraged me to start piano. And then when I decided to major in music and English in college, you're all for it. And then they support me financially with the studio and my releases and everything. So they're extremely supportive. And I'm really grateful for that. Well, and that, before we get into the album, the new album that's going to be released here this summer, but also your music, how does your uh, musical style come about? Where did you get the, like, when did you say country and pop is the two areas that I want to go into? Pop has always been the first one. I love pop music. I always have. It's the music that I mostly listen to. I go to pop concerts. I can't wait to go back to concerts. I'm waiting for that day. Um, and I, I love pop music so much. So that was the genre that I started to dive into because it was the genre that was familiar to me. And then country came very recently when Kelsey Ballerini released Homecoming Queen not too long ago. That's when I fell in love with country. And then for about six months now, I've been exploring writing in the genre and I love both of them. And I get the question a lot, like, are you going to eventually pick between the two? And I don't think I am because pop music is the music that flows through me and country is, is, is a genre that can be more vulnerable with, I feel like, because of the storytelling that's so strong in it. And I can kind of be more open in my country music, I feel, than my pop, which is interesting. So I like to explore both genres when I can. And now, how does your writing style come about? How how do you write a song? Because that's the biggest challenge for any musician is first coming up with the tune and then writing the song. Or for you, is it writing the song and then coming up with the tune? So take me through your writing style, because that is the biggest uh, request that I often get from uh, people listening to the show is how do you musicians come up with their music? So how do you, how did you come up with your music? So for me, it all starts with an inspiration. I think it's so important to know what inspired you and what you want the song to be about before you go writing the lyrics and the melody and the chord structure and production and all of that. So basically what I do a lot of the times is once something strikes me as 
to me, I do what's called sensory free writing, which is basically a title or a feeling or an image or whatever, whatever inspired you write from that. And then after you do that, you'd be surprised of the lyrics waiting for you. And once you have that all down, you know 100% that the lyrics and the song that you're going to write is completely authentic. And that's so important. So once I have my free writing and go through and structure the song and the lyrics, then I focus on the melody. And I think it's really important that the melody and the lyrics complement each other. And so I focus a lot on highlighting the lyrics and the message and making sure that the music side of it really brings out the message of the song. And then I do sit with the song for a while, which I think is really important. A lot of songwriters I know like to take the first draft of a song and run with it, record it, perform it, whatever. And it's really important to sit with it and make sure it's exactly how you want it and then revise any lyrics or phrasing that you think needs to be revised so you know that it's 100% how you want it before you share it with the world. Are you your harshest critic? I think I am. And I've gotten better (laughs) with not being that because I feel like I've gotten better with my confidence over the past year and a half. And I think it's important to be hard on yourself to a point, because if you don't care about what you're doing, nobody else is going to care. So I think it's really important for you to kind of put a little bit of pressure on yourself to make your songs the best that they can be and to make my songs the best that I can make them. So I know when I share it with everybody else that I'm proud of it. And if I wasn't a little bit critical of my work, then I wouldn't have that excitement and pride when I share my songs. Um, you, you talked about the sensory imagery about how you create your music and how you write your music. Um, are most of those imageries that you're looking at and when you're thinking about the music, are they coming from de- uh, personal sp- uh, stories, personal anecdotes, or are they mostly more uh, generic imagery that you're looking at? Like how, like do, is, is your music more, because we're going to talk about the two songs that I want to talk about yeah. here, but which ones, which, which way do you go? Is it more personal when you write or is it another way? It's definitely more personal. And I think that's something that's super close to my heart because when I started songwriting, everybody knows I have the biggest imagination. I'm a creative writing student. I'm getting my master's. So I'm really imaginative. And when I started songwriting, I just wrote anything, any story. I made it up and I wrote it and I had a whole, I had a whole album worth of songs recorded and ready to release, but then I didn't release them because I didn't connect with any of my songs. And the reason is it's because they weren't my story. So it's really important for me to write personal songs, no matter how difficult that could be. So let's talk about that first song that you did release, the first single, Into Focus. Uh, Where did that story come from? Because let's get behind the story for the, the music here a bit. So how did you finally decide, you know what, after writing an album's worth of music, this is the song that I want to put out there. This is the first, this is, uh, this is the song I want to be introduced to introduce my fans and potentially new fans to. So that was a song that I needed at the time when I wrote it. And that's because when I was in undergrad, still at the time when I wrote that song, I was really struggling at the time with school. That's when I added my English major and double majoring in music and English is really hard. It's a lot of work and really time consuming. And I was struggling and I feel like I couldn't really see the light after that. I was like, I'm literally drowning. I don't know what to do. And so that was the song that I wrote one day in a practice room at school. And as soon as I wrote it, I felt so much better because that song is like a mirror reflecting back at me, basically saying it's okay. We all have dark times and and difficult times, but things will come into focus and get better. And that was a message I needed at the time. And I'm a really open person in my lyrics and when I'm talking to people. And I think that releasing that song as my first single was a great introduction to who I am because I'm not afraid to kind of show who I really am. And I'm always open to accepting the fact that things aren't always okay. And that's fine because we all go through things. And I want this song to be a message to anybody who hears it that you're not alone in your struggles and things will get better. 
Now, getting into the studio and recording that song must have, uh, because like you said, it is a deeply personal song that you've written, uh, but getting into the studio and recording that must have been overwhelming because now you're going into a new level of uh, musician, right? Because beforehand, musicians who just start out, they can record music like uh, on, on your own computer, but going into a studio is a different feeling. So going into that studio for the first time and recording into focus, how was that experience for you? It was magical. And the story kind of behind the whole studio thing is that I actually tried with two producers before Bob, who is my current producer. I love him. He's fantastic. And so I actually did recording before releasing that song. And I just couldn't find a good producer at the time. It was hard to find somebody I felt comfortable with and that understood my genre, my vision for my music. And so I feel like recording that song with Bob Bob and deciding to release it as my first single was a really magical day. It was September of 2019 when we did that. And it was, it was, I finally felt like I found the right studio and the right producer and I was getting ready to release this special song to the world. So it was, it was an amazing experience. You're, you're getting ready to release a new song to the world, September 2019. And then the pandemic hits. Then the pandemic hits in March 2020. So how do you as a new musician navigate through the world pandemic of, OK, everything's locked down now. So you can't do the typical musician as go around touring and start trying to get followers. How did you adapt to the new world that we live in? Actually, despite not being able to perform live shows, it's been it's been incredible, honestly, because I had so much time to explore my sound and explore country and develop my pop music more and, and get the songs written that I wanted on my album. Because right before the pandemic hit, I only had one more song to record for the album. And then obviously after that being in lockdown for months, I kind of changed my direction a little bit and wrote new songs to kind of swap out some of the other ones. And so I kind of found myself more during that time. And also also, like social media and the way that everybody's communicating now has opened so many doors for me because I did a virtual songwriting retreat with Andre Salpe, who is a multi platinum songwriter. And it was like an incredible experience because I've never done anything like that before and I've always wanted to. And because we were in the pandemic, I didn't have to travel to Nashville or LA or New York to do something like that. I was able to get a taste of what those things are like from home. So it was really amazing to be able to do that in August of 2020. And then from that point on, I felt more confident in myself. I started doing a lot of co-writing with other songwriters and artists, and I was able to kind of grow with my music marketing skills as well. And make connections online and got interviews and airplay on my new song, Ellie Will Wait For Me, that came out in March. And so I kind of had a nice experience, to be honest, despite not being able to perform. But I'm really excited to hopefully get out and perform this summer. Which is good. And, uh, and that's why that's a good segue into my next set of questions is uh, in March, you did release your new song. I just want to make sure LA will wait for me. You have a new album coming out in this summer. I'm assuming as it said in it's your bio. The fall. And the oh, fall. It's, it's been, it's been moved to the fall. Okay. But LA wait for me. Let's talk about that song because it is, is, is your newest single. Um, Let's let's talk about how that song came about, because when you listen to the song, it's such an upbeat song and it's such a uh, when you're listening to the lyrics and you're listening to the melody, it sounds like you're putting so much fun into that music. How did that song come about? I actually co-wrote that with my friend Madison Young, and it was an incredible experience because we both have strong ties to California and we are both missing it so much because we can't be back there currently because of the pandemic. So I feel like at the time when we were on Zoom and talking about what we wanted to write about and getting to know each other more, we kind of decided, hey, you know what? Let's write a song about L.A. and find the hope in that song that we'll be able to go back soon. And it's been incredible. Like that release is, has been absolutely insane because 
so many people connected to it. And that was a big fear of ours. It was like, this is such a personal song to us. It's so specifically about California and LA. And we were worried that other people wouldn't be able to connect with it because of how specific it is. But that we were completely wrong because so many people reached out and were like, hey, this reminded me of this place that I can't go back to right now and made me excited and hopeful that one day I'll be able to go back again. And so the response has been insane, especially over in the UK. They've been lovely and incredible over there. And so I'm just really happy of how the world is receiving that song. Well, and let's talk about that. How how have you changed because of the, the feedback you're getting from your music? Because when people give feedback, positive feedback, sometimes uh, some musicians' egos might get larger. Uh, people might think a different way. So how have you been able to stay grounded? Because you seem like a grounded person. This is the second time we've chatted to each other, first through uh, social media and now through personal. But you seem such like a grounded person. It seems so refreshing to have a grounded person who is in the music industry. So how have you been able to stay grounded because like I've been following your I like listen to the, your music I've been following your social media and it seems like people are receptive to your music so how are you staying grounded in an uh, industry that is so based on ego I think it's because of how much I've wanted this for so long and I know a lot of the artists I look up to or used to look up to have definitely changed once they started to get bigger and recognized and that was something like as a fan I didn't personally like because I was like oh I knew this person when they were small and now all of a sudden that people are listening to their music more they're changing and I just kind of felt like betrayed as a fan that I thought I knew this person and loved their music but there's somebody completely different and I don't want to be like that at all and I try to be as honest and real as I can on social media and my music interviews everything I do and I feel like I'll always be that way because I've worked my butt off literally like as an independent artist to get anywhere close to where I am now and so I'm just super grateful and that's what it all comes down to like I'm so grateful for everything and everybody I talk is equally amazing and so i'm just so thankful for it all so i I feel like i'll always stay grounded and true to who i am well and that's like i get again another segue that we can do here is what's the future old yet again uh you've just said that your new album your first album is going to be released in the fall but what's next for you what are you going to be doing uh until that time is it releasing a new single sometime over the next few months until the new album drops or what what's next for demi so at the time of recording this, my new single hasn't released yet, but this is coming out in June, so it will be out. So will I ever, it will be my most current single, which is the lead single off Dear Diary, which is my album. And that's coming out May 21st. So that is currently out for everybody listening. Um, so that song is so special to me. And I think that's my first total deep dive into being as personal as I can. And to focus is definitely personal. My original Christmas song, All I Want This Christmas, is close to my heart. Ellie Will Wait For Me is personal. But Will I Ever is that first glimpse into real 100% authentic me. And so I'm really excited for that. And it's a, it's a great taste of what Dear Diary, my album is going to share. And creating that first album, creating Dear Diary, um, every, for the people who are listening, it will be out in the fall, like I said, but um, what can we expect from that? Is it all personal songs? Is it upbeat songs? How, like how did the mix of becoming this first album for you come about? Because deciding what music is going to be on the album is always the hardest part because you always have a, a, a catalog of music you want to put on, but you have to choose between let's say six and 10 songs that you're going to put on. So how did you narrow those music down? Was it a hard choice or was it easy? It was actually really easy, but as I was saying before, we kind of swapped songs around a little bit, but I recorded a lot of songs with my producer so far. And the album is going to be a pop album. My country music's coming next year. But I, I feel like in terms of picking the songs and deciding on the track list, it was kind of so easy for me because the songs that are on it just 
were like flashing neon signs like put me on the album and then the other ones were just like good songs that I liked but I didn't connect to as much so I kind of went with what my heart was telling me that the song that should be on it and I also talked to my producer as well like asked his opinion and so we agreed on 10 songs and then there is going to be an acoustic track of will i ever as a bonus track which is the 11th one so there's a lot of songs on it and it's all pop so i'm super excited we are uh yet again recording this in april of 2021 uh new music coming out in june 2021 fall of 2021 uh, may sorry (laughs) may may 2021 album coming out in uh in the fall of 2021 2021 seems to be your year looking back on your so far short career but looking back at 2019 when you recorded that first song in the uh studio could you imagine you would be here two years later with an album prepared to drop two singles in 2021 so far that you might release another one later on but could you imagine yourself where you are today definitely not absolutely not and i feel like (laughs) yeah and honestly like it's so weird to say but i honestly think that being stuck at home for months allowed me to find myself and be more creative and get to the headspace I needed to be at. Because when I released Into Focus and All I Want This Christmas, my first two singles, I was still so new that I just focused on, okay, I wrote the song, I recorded it, I got artwork, I released it. Hey, everybody, my song's out. And then I like completely didn't do anything because I was so not confident in myself yet. And I had no clue how to market myself. I didn't understand networking. I didn't get the whole social media thing. Like I was so new to the whole business side of music because I was so focused on the creative side. And I feel like being on lockdown allowed me to not only develop my creative side, but also understand the music marketing side as well. And so that really helped me to get to where I am now. And I feel much more confident in the industry. And so I'm really excited for all the music this year. And I hope all my listeners really enjoy it because I love all the music that's getting released. Awesome. Um, you, You have had an incredible two years to yourself. For someone who's listening to this right now, to an independent uh, musician here in Canada, here in the United, there in the United States, around the world who are listening to this, what advice would you give them? Would you give a independent musician who, like yourself, wants to get somewhere and is not sure if they can do it? What advice would you be able to give them? The first big piece of advice is to always stay true to yourself because this is a difficult industry and you will have people who try to bring you down or shape you into somebody you're not. So there's a lot of that negativity out there, but you just have to surround yourself with positive people who support you and stay true to yourself. And also don't give up. Like I literally almost gave up so many times because I was overwhelmed and honestly didn't know what I was doing. I still don't know who I'm doing hundred percent. Like I'm still learning. Um, but you can't give up because if you give up, then like you'll never know if you could have made it in any way in the music industry. And you definitely don't want to live your life wondering, oh, if I would have put this just one more song out, would it have been the song? And so I kind of try to keep that mindset, stay true to myself, stay creative and write the music you want to write and release the music you want to write. And I think that's the most incredible thing about being an independent artist is that independent artists have full 100% creative control. We can do whatever we want. And so release and write what feels right to you. And if it's meaningful to you, then everybody all over the world will love it as well. Awesome. Uh, Before we do wrap up with the last question, I just want to take this moment and ask you, where can people find you? Can people follow you on social media? And if so, which outlets are you on? I am on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. You can search Demi Michelle. It will come up. But my handle on everything is at Demi M. Schwartz. 
And also I have a website, which is demaymschwartz.com. And this is where you can keep up with all my music. I also run a blog on there where I post at least two blogs a month about what I'm up to, things about songwriting and my inspirations and everything, literally anything and everything. I try to keep it fresh and interesting. And then also on the homepage of the site, you can subscribe to my email list and get exclusive news first first lessons of my songs and so much more. Awesome. Uh, Demi, I want to thank you so much for doing this to the listeners who are still paying attention, who are still here with us. Um, I will link her Facebook, her YouTube, her Instagram, her Twitter, her website in the show notes of the of the of the uh, show. So click on them, follow her. She is an amazing artist. She's an upcoming artist. I would highly recommend it. I'm looking forward to the new album dropping this fall, uh, Dear Diary. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Demi, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor. Thank you. Thank you once again for listening to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. If you love this episode of the Cross Border Interview Podcast, head over to iTunes or wherever you get your podcast and subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. All the links to our social media accounts are in the show notes or visit www.crossborderinterviews.ca. The Cross Border Interview Podcast was produced and edited by Miranda Brown and Associates Incorporated. Be sure to tune in for our next episode of the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Once again, thank you.